players, we always want to find the newest, coolest products that will help us find the tone and the sound that we hear in our heads. Often we think that this requires a lot of new pedals, new amplifiers, new guitars, and things like that, but there is a really inexpensive accessory that I feel like is overlooked, especially by today's guitar players and younger guitar players that was utilized more heavily in the 80s and 90s that will really help you rediscover the gear that you already have, in particular your amplifiers, or to bring new options to your amplifiers that you never knew was possible. I'm talking about nothing other than the line out box. And this is something that I feel like is really underutilized by a lot of guitar players, and it can do so many things. It can be used to turn an amp that doesn't have any sort of effects loop, with a line level output so that you can run wet effects after a dirty amp, let's say like an old Marshall or old Fender that you're running cranked, but you can't separate the delays and reverbs from the preamp section and use it after. You can use it to have multiple preamp stages so that you can involve maybe a clean preamp from a Fender and then go to a dirty preamp from something like a Marshall or Soldano. A line out box can also allow you to run a wet dry wet rig and in fact is one of the requisite components of running a proper wet dry wet rig. It can also allow you to put two amplifiers in series and cascade them just like Eddie Van Halen did where you're gonna be running one amplifier as a glorified distortion or overdrive pedal to clip the next amplifier in the series. We're gonna go into all this today and we're gonna talk about some famous applications of each one of these things that I've just briefly outlined with players like Jerry Garcia, Eddie Van Halen, and pretty much all the Robert Bradshaw rigs and artists that existed back in the 80s and 90s, whether we're talking about Steve Lukather from Toto, Michael Landau, Dan Huff, and many more classic and celebrated session guitarists. So let's get into it, line out boxes, their uses, and why you might wanna incorporate one into your rig. Now today for the signal path, for all the demonstrations that we're gonna be using, I'm gonna be using a Gibson Les Paul. I'm gonna be using some processing effects from my pedal board, which is wired for a wet, dry, wet application. We're gonna be rearranging some of the effects to fit the context of some of the examples. I'll go through that as we go through each example. I'm also gonna be using a line out box. Again, sort of the star of today's video. I'm gonna be using one that was custom made by Robert Bradshaw. However, there isn't really any reason to choose one line out box over the other. There isn't a tonal aspect to them. They're for the most part pretty much the same. Some of them do utilize things like isolation transformers and have ground lifts or polarity switches and things like that. But as far as the basics, this is a fairly simple box to build. It's all with fairly common parts and fairly standardized across the industry for people that make them. It's nothing that can't be had for $50. In fact, the version that I recommend is made by Bray. It's available on Reverb for $50. We'll have that link below as well if you're interested in picking one up inexpensively that can perform the same functions as we're gonna show today. I'll go through the amplifiers in more detail as we wire each one of the sound examples up, but it'll be a combination of Fender amplifiers, a vintage Marshall, and a Soldano SLO. So before we get into these examples, let's just kind of break down what a line out box is. Essentially, it's completely passive. There's no power that's required to this. It connects to your speaker and the speaker input jack on your amplifier and then produces a line level output, which is basically tapping off of the output transformer and then giving you an unbalanced output and that can just feed your pedals with the regular guitar cable so in essence you got the speaker connected to one side of the line out box then another speaker cable takes the line out box to go into your actual speaker jack on the amplifier then there's an additional jack that comes out of there that's the line out and then that has a volume control that's tied to it so that you can either attenuate or raise the level hitting the subsequent pedals that are coming after the line out. That way you don't clip them or you can add a little extra level if you have something that's maybe running at mic or line level so you can get it at the proper level that it needs going into that particular effect. Today we're gonna to be running the level quite low because we're gonna be using ordinary guitar pedals for the most part and we don't wanna clip those inputs and we'll make up the gain on the output section going through my Cab Zeus that's made by GFI and also on my interface made by Universal Audio which is the Apollo. The first way of using a line out box that we're gonna talk about today is the Eddie Van Halen methodology or the EVH method. And in this method, we're essentially going to be using two amps. Using the first amp is essentially an overdrive pedal to overdrive the second amp, just as though you were putting two overdrive pedals in series. So in this method, my guitar is going to go into a Marshall, a vintage Marshall that I have here from 1969, a 100 watt Super Lead. 
Then I'm going to put that Marshall into my Sur Reactive load, using it only as a load, not using it for anything else. Then I'm going to take the line out and I'm going to feed that into the front of a Soldano SLO. I'm going to put the Soldano, just for the purposes of making it a little bit more Marshall-y, like a vintage Marshall, I'm going to put it on the crunch setting, which is a little less gain than the overdrive setting. And I'm going to use my Marshall, my vintage Marshall, to drive into the front of my Soldano SLO. So I'm using the preamp of my Marshall to clip the preamp section of my SLO, running these two amps in series. So first I'm going to show you what the Marshall is like. I'm running it pretty hot. I'm running it into the Sur reactive load, and I'm going to run that output through a cabinet. Then I'm going to remove the speaker cabinet from the Marshall, just set the Sur reactive load to load, and then feed the line out into the Soldano. So I'm getting the Marshall feeding the Soldano so you can hear the Marshall alone. And then what the Marshall does when I have a preamp, feeding another preamp, and I've loaded down that Marshall with a load. Let's check that out. <laughs> So you can hear there that the Marshall on its own, and I've got it pretty cranked, has a nice gain sound, but then when I bring it into Cascade into the Soldano SLO, even though the Soldano is not run that hot, again, I have it on the cleaner channel in the crunch mode, which is just a slight amount of grit just beyond the clean channel, it really just makes it even more ballsy and more fat and just sounds absolutely beautiful. And you can see why guys like Eddie Van Halen would run these two together because there weren't a lot of overdrive pedals at that point that were really amp-like. How could you get any more amp-like than cascading two amps together using a Marshall as a glorified pedal or preamp pedal hitting another preamp section? Now, if you wanted to recreate this with your own gear, you certainly will need the line out box or there are some devices like my Sur Reactive Load or a THD hot plate that already have a line out built into them and they can provide either a resistive or a reactive load so that you could load down one of your Marshalls or one of your vintage amps, crank it up, and then use that to feed another amplifier to use one of your amps as a glorified overdrive or distortion pedal to cascade in series with another amplifier. Now let's talk about somebody who is fundamentally different from Eddie Van Halen, and that's Jerry Garcia and how he used a line-out box in order to perform some of the functions that he wanted to get his signature sound. Now Jerry was a little bit different in that he loved clean tones, and he would use primarily a Fender Twin. Now later in his career, he liked to use the preamp section of a Fender Twin, but would take a line out and feed that into a separate power amp section that was a little bit more high fidelity using something made by Macintosh. Now, essentially how he would do it is he'd run, you know, his gear into the front of the twin. He would take a line out, again, tapping off the output transformer of the twin, and would take that and go into the Macintosh and would have this separate power amp that was separate from the preamp. So he would have the preamp section of the Fender and then would use the power amp section of the Macintosh. Now, I'm not sure as to whether he would continue to run the speaker cabinet from the twin reverb or whether he would load that. Back in that time, there weren't a lot of reactive load options, so he likely was using a resistive load if he did that, which would be more akin to what you would see from the THD hot plate as opposed to the Sur reactive load. So how am I going to run this today? I'm going to take my Les Paul. I'm going to run it into my Fender Hot Rod DeVille ML. I'm going to connect that to a Sur reactive load where the speaker would normally connect. I'm also going to throw in my custom audio electronics line out box. That's then going to feed a separate power amp. I'm going to use my Soldano SLO and I'm just going to plug into the return only. So I'm just using the power amp section of this, which is using 5881s, which is totally dissimilar from the Fender Hot Rod ML. I'm going to show it to you both ways so you can hear the difference. I'm going to start with just the Fender Hot Rod DeVille ML so that you're hearing the preamp and power amp section from that amp. And then I'm going to separate it so I'm using the preamp section, using the line out, and then feeding it into the power amp section of a 100 watt amp using 5881 tubes. So you can hear how that differs and why somebody like Jerry Garcia would want to split perhaps the preamp section of one amp and use the power amp section of another amp. <laughs> 
think that sounded great. You can really see there how maybe it got a little bit more compression, a little bit more fatness, in fact, I think when we went to that 100 watt, even though there was presumably more headroom, by doing it this way and having that extra headroom, I could use a little bit more volume from the ML, still keep it clean. I really love how that sound. It allowed me to increase the volume a little bit on my DeVille because I had that 100 watt headroom in that power amp section of the Soldano, allowed it to sound a little fatter, have a little bit more bloom. I really think the tones overall were really great. And I could definitely see why somebody like Jerry Garcia would want to use that line out box to kind of split between a preamp section from one amp and the power amp section of another amplifier. Now let's look at what I call the effects loop method. And this is in essence taking an amplifier that doesn't have any sort of effects loop, let's say like a vintage Marshall like I have over here, and making it something that can accept delays and reverbs after the preamp section. Now again, this vintage Marshall predated effects loops, so this doesn't have any ability to be able to separate the wet effects from the dirty preamp. So I'm gonna set this thing fairly dirty and then I'm gonna connect it to a line out box. So I'm able to run that Marshall fairly distorted as my dry amp, use the line level output and feed that into my pedal board. And there it's receiving all of my wet processing, some chorus, some delay and some reverb. And then I'm feeding that into a GFI cab Zeus to do the wet processing. And then I'm feeding my Marshall with its own dry cabinet, which is giving me my own channel. So it's essentially a wet dry wet rig in this context. Although I'm running all the pedals in the series, I'm not using any sort of parallel processing but the signal path is splitting in parallel without any sort of mixing. I just have all the pedals in series and the dry path is in all of them. But this is gonna sound really glorious and I think it's a great way to be able to use wet effects and processing after a dry amplifier that is distorted, especially if you have a vintage style amplifier like an old Fender or an old Marshall. You wanna run it with some gain and you wanna put those wet effects after the preamp. Let's do it. <laughs> So it sounded glorious. I love how it sounded. Uh, I think that this is again a great way to be able to incorporate some of the more studio or modern applications of being able to put some of this processing after the preamp without having to do any modifications to your amp or any need to use any sort of uh, effects loop box or anything like that. You're just taking your line out box, it's totally passive piece of gear, connects to the back. That is then feeding my pedal board where all the wet processing is happening and then I'm using a simulated cab and microphone for the wet side. I'm using a real mic and cab on my Marshall. Again, I have a mic and cab underneath the studio so I'm able to record that, bring it into my Apollo and then I separately have my wet channels for left and right that's again run in parallel with the dry signal. Now let's go to the last way that of course is probably the most used way for a line out box, which is a wet dry wet rig. So for this example, I'm gonna be using my Soldano SLO. And the Soldano SLO actually has a line out built into the back of the amplifier and has a volume control for it. Now it doesn't have any polarity control, it doesn't have any ground lift, but for the most part, if I'm running everything into this amp, I'm not gonna have much of a potential for any sort of ground noise or any sort of ground loop. So I'm gonna be using that to drive everything as far as the line out is concerned. Guitar is going to plug into my pedal board, which is going to plug into my Soldano. I have all of my Soldano amp switching available inside of my mastermind here on the floor. And I also have all my wet processing that's going to be happening after the line level output. I'm again going to use that GFI cab Zeus for this to do all the wet processing in parallel. I do have my reverbs and delays set to 100% wet here. And I have my delay and reverb mixed in parallel through the mixer that's built into the Source Audio Collider delay and reverb pedal on my board. So that's all going to be running in the same fashion. The Soldano is also going to be running that cabinet under the house for the dry cabinet mic'd brought into the Apollo. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
So that was the wet dry wet method. Again, probably the most used methodology of using a line out box. But today you got to see a lot of different applications. We got to see using the line out box from my Sur reactive load, which would be very similar to something like a THD hot plate where it creates the load for the amplifier so you don't need a cabinet for it, and then produces a line level output which we can feed to any of your line level pedals. We also saw the actual use of the line out box that I use with my Marshall and also with the Fender. We also saw that some amps actually have line outs built into them. The Soldano has it, a lot of Mesa boogies also have it. Sometimes you'll see it called a slave output. It's the same concept as a line out, again, tapping off that output transformer and then giving you a line level output that's gonna feed your wet effects, or in some cases, feeding another amplifier if you wanna do that Eddie Van Halen style. So you've heard a lot of different ways. You've heard some classical incarnations, whether that's Eddie Van Halen, whether that's Jerry Garcia, whether it's kind of the classic Bradshaw way of running a wet dry wet system. You've seen how to use a resistive load or a reactive load in order to load down that dry amp if you wanna do that. And you've seen other ways to also incorporate simulated cabinets as we did here with the GFI cab Zeus that I was using for a lot of our wet processing for the left and right wet cabs. Cause I don't really feel like there's any reason to bring an additional two cabinets in the room for the wet processing usually that's supposed to be fairly linear and it's supposed to kind of insulate the dry signal and let the dry signal really be sort of the driving force and the tonal force behind the overall sound. And if you want to pick one of these up, as I recommended, the Bray is a great option for this. It doesn't have any of the polarity switches or isolation, but in most cases, you're probably not going to need that. If you do need to have that, the Sur is also another great option. And that has, again, a phase control or polarity control as well as a ground lift and an isolated output. So that can make it a little nicer if you do have some concerns about ground loops in your system. But again, for 50 bucks, it's an easy way to start to experiment. Again, if you're gonna be running amps without any speaker cabinet, do make sure that you have some sort of load, whether that's from something like a reactive load like I have from Sur, or something like a THD hot plate. There again are many other reactive or resistive loads that you can use that have built in line out boxes inside of them, as well as some amplifiers, again, having those same line outs built inside of them. Thank you so much for watching. If you dug what you saw today, give us a thumbs up, comment of another way that you use a line out box that maybe we didn't talk about in this video or other applications other than guys like Eddie Van Halen or Jerry Garcia or Robert Bradshaw and a lot of those classic rigs that he built for Steve Lukather and Michael Landau or Dan Huff. We'd love to hear from you about that. And if you wanna support us, you can always go over to the Vertex FX website, buy a pedal from one of our authorized dealers or head over to the Rig Doctor website, buy some cables, buy some zip ties, buy some tie down mounts, buy some Velcro. If you're rebuilding your pedal board, you need some of those materials, it's a great way to help support us and support the channel. And of course, if you want a free way to engage with us, we have a great podcast that I'm doing with Grant from Goodwood Audio and Brian from A Million Audio. We have a podcast called The Chairman of the Boards. We do a pedal board round table every week. We talk about pedal board problems, pedal board solutions, and how to get the tone that you hear in your head onto your pedal board. So do check that out if you haven't already. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA The Rig Doctor. See you later.